Listen to what I'm saying here. Value is not based on what you own or what you have. In fact, I'll drop this jewel on you real quick. Real value is based on what you can do without. It's, it's not about what you can accumulate. It's how functional are you with nothing. And we can't function on nothing, so that becomes the scale. How low can you go? How deep can you go? Because after a while, if you really become a spiritual being, you don't rely on the world for nothing. Nothing. You enter the world, but you are not dependent upon the world. You're dependent upon invisible forces. What are the invisible forces? Love. People can't see love. They're too busy watching hate. It's all about your perception. If you see love, you see love. I'll say it again. If you see love, if you can see it, this is love right here. I'm seeing love. She in her own mind may believe I'm not love. <laughs> love is bigger than me. I'm just whoever I am. No, that's in her head. She's only a dream character in my perception. She could be God for all I know. We don't know who anybody is, so why can't she be God? We don't know where God is, when God is, how God is, so why she can't be God? This woman right here, I choose with my perception to see her as God. This is an ancient African technique. God was never outside of your perception. God was never outside of what you thought. That's why Western man came and said, there is no God, they're just making it up. Right! <laughs> but God is the greatest human invention in human history. And the reason being, the reason Africans created God is so that humanity in its infinity would never run out of something to rise to. This is why God exists. If you don't have God, you don't rise. There is nothing human about technology, sorry. Nothing human about it. And this is what I want to say in terms of your spirit. What can you see? This is God to me. And I respect her and will treat her just like that. That's my perception of her. <coughs> now she can do something to break that perception. She could do something to enhance it. Mm. What if she knew that I thought she was God? There'd be something in her that would try to live up to the image that I see of her. There'd be something in her that when she approached me, she would at least have to either deny God or become. This is how as a community we treated each other. If there is no God, then we are not family. The only way we can be brothers or sisters is if we have the same parent. Think. We cannot call ourselves brothers or sisters if we don't have the same mother or father. When God is the eternal mother, we become all brothers and sisters. When we all say yes, I am part of this idea called God, not a man in the sky, not even a metaphor, not even a spirit in a, a, a separate consciousness. No, 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 we don't have to get there yet. Let's just make God up right now, like our ancestors did. They never, nobody told them what God was. What God was was your dead father. What God was was your, your deceased mother. Grandmother, great-grandmother, ancestor, builder of the tribe. This was the God. And when we got rid of the God, we stopped worshiping that God and started worshiping their God. 
we lost our spiritual power. If you have order, you don't break laws. Gravity is an order. You don't break that law. Breathing is an order. There's an exercise where, oh, we could say this, rock star energy drink. Why, I just put that in history. <laughs> See how quick history come up right there? Rock star energy drink. Those who wanna um, do the exercise, we're gonna say rock star to ourselves without opening our mouths, without saying anything outside. We're gonna say this to ourselves. We're gonna say rock star to ourselves. Don't say it out loud at the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. Now the question to ask, if you've said rock star in, in your mind, the question to ask is, what voice is that? What voice is that? What, what voice just spoke? You just said rock star without moving your mouth at all. <laughs> on top of that, you, you, on top of saying rock star, you heard yourself say rock star. Uh, how can you hear yourself say rock star and no vibration of sound has happened? See, this puts a different perspective on what sound actually is. And, and what memory is. Memory's not in the brain, memory's in the soul. The only thing you take with you after this life is your memories or your knowledge, your experiences. That's the only thing you take. Unless you study Egypt uh, uh, culture, they believe you can take all their stuff with you on the other side. <laughs> Just as a, a side note. But if you said, rock star in your mind or in your being is the true answer, is the true statement. In your being, what was that voice? What was the voice that spoke and then you heard yourself speaking? But these ears did not hear you say anything because your mouth didn't move. So the ears didn't hear it, the mouth did not move, but you spoke and you heard yourself speaking. If you close your eyes, you can see this better. If you close your eyes and put this image in another site, if you close your eyes, you can still see this. What is the sight that can see your future? These two eyes don't see the future. These two eyes don't see the past, yet you can see your past and you can see your future. You can actually see your past. <laughs> what is the sight that can see beyond time? Hmm. <laughs> don't give it away. <laughs> what is you, this is this is an ancient meditation. This is an ancient meditation that I am not the flesh. I am the energy, the consciousness, the being in the flesh. And this is proof. This is no faith. This is not religion. This is actual fact. You can speak without moving your mouth. You can hear without ears. You can see without eyes. So what happens when these eyes, this mouth, and this ear drops off into the grave? These other senses are all you're left with. Death is an illusion. Once you realize this, you live your life more courageously. Now, no one wants to die before their time, so you try to protect yourself. But know that this body is the limitation of you. It is not your zenith. It is not your ultimate. Your ultimate is that voice that just said rock star. <laughs> that voice that just said rock star without nothing physical moving. That person is immortal. 
that person is not here with you. Let's go deeper. The body is in, what is it? Three dimensions, right? Forward, back, right, left, up, down, and time. Fourth dimension. Three dimensions plus time. That's our physical reality. Front, back, right, left, up, down, that's 3D plus time. What happened to in and out? Look at the East, look at the, the English thought. Back, forth, right, left, up, down, no in and out. No in and out. What is in and out? Rock star. <laughs> Rock star says, I exist without the body. So where is this other existence? Where is it? It's not here. It's not in three-dimensional space where you really are. The person that said this is in a whole different dimension. Just switch a little bit. Talk to yourself more. <laughs> Affirm to yourself more. Don't move none of it. Mm, no, close this down and go within and say, I am the greatest dot, dot, dot ever. I have all my needs coming with speed. I am a being of love and light and knowledge. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whatever it is, have your affirmation on your tongue. Or, sorry, in your being. This is how the gods created this whole reality. The first humans, imagine, the first humans, they came from inner space. They came out. Study the Anunnaki's. They came out of inner space. Not from up, outer space. Inner space. Rock star. <laughs> Before there was a body, there was this voice. Traveling in this voice's dimension. To get here to the earth. The inner voice created this outer extension of itself to be in this dimension. Once you realize that you are not just in this dimension, but you're also in another dimension, you now are free. Because whatever happens to you here in this dimension is not your only reality. See, this is how Jesus was able to get beaten and, and brutalized and hang on the cross. He wasn't here. He was the rock star. Inside he went to the inner man. Do what you want with the body. I'm not here. Now once you realize that level of consciousness, where you are officially, you identify yourself as the spirit, not the flesh. You are the inner voice, not the outer voice. Once you become the inner voice, now your outer voice has power. Now when you speak, it's not just a shell speaking. There's a being speaking through the shell. And this is where you heal all sickness in your body. This is where you command reality to work with you and it works according to your consciousness. Why? Because it's not a shell that's speaking. There's a real being in the shell that is speaking. And when the real being speaks, all nature and the universe responds. People are realizing now that your environment is way more important than even your culture. That, you're, that the environment you're in, your genes are responding to the environments that you're in. Imagine that. That everything you do as a human, there's a tiny, 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 tiny little organism running around that does the exact same thing. Let me say it, let me, put, let me put it to you this way so you can really see it. You are only a collection of cells. You should really spell it as C-E-L-F. Cell. Because what the self is, is the consciousness of cells. Cells reproduce. <laughs> they talk. They have waste. They have a job and a function. Every cell knows what it's supposed to do. These are little thinking beings. 
And when they unite, they make you. The way you think is what they are thinking. When you say, I'm hungry, it's not you that's hungry, it's your cells that are hungry. You are the slave of your higher self, C-E-L-F. You are the servant of your higher self until you become your higher self, then you're free. This is why they say you are born a slave. You are. You're a slave to yourself. You're a slave to the addictions that your cells want. You're a slave to the made-up realities of your language. You're a slave to your fears and this kind of thing. Once you realize that I am the eternal, immortal being that speaks without this body, has existence without time and space, once you really know that, you start moving like that, and then reality starts playing with you. You start reading things right in the nick of time, some message coming to you right off the wall, nobody else see it. You're the only one to see it. Why? Because your perception is such. This is how you get over, this is how you get past, this is how you compete. Never compete is how you compete. The ancient way. This is the ancient, ancient way. You don't compete. That's, that's the English way. The way of nature is cooperation. Everything works in cooperation. That's why we African Americans are here in the United States today. I didn't talk much on black history, but here's little bees. <laughs> That's why we're here. I'll drop this little piece on you. There's a book called Slave Religion uh, by Robotar. Robotar. Uh, uh, I can't, R O B O T E A U. R O B O T E A U. It's called Slave Religion. In this book, this guy talks about how we got to the United States, which was over about four or five different migrations. First of all, Africans were already here in the United States. We were already here from like 50,000 years ago. We, we were first called Native Americans. We were called indigo. This is where you get the word Indian from. It's not from the word indigenous. It's from the word indigo. That was the, that was the color of the people that they first saw. The original human beings were, were blue black. Uh, it's, it's preserved in Hindu art. They have like Krishna in blue and all that. Uh, but now it's, it's, it's now more glamorized. But back in the days, humans were blue black. They were called indigo. And when these uh, Western explorers came to some of these islands, what they saw was dark, dark, really dark, dark skinned people. And they called them indigos. That became Indians or Indo. You said Indo European, Indonesian, Indo. That's all dealing with the color indigo because that's what the original black, so called black man or woman, I have to say woman what the original black woman was because geneticists now have realized that the entire history of humanity is in women. Meaning that from the first, what they call African Eve, a genetic Eve, the first black woman to leave Africa and, and, and venture into Europe and other parts of Asia and, 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 and other parts of Africa, this one woman, they say she, we have all of her genes. We have, like most of humanity has all of her genes. And it's women that have passed these genes on through human history. Forget somebody writing history. Your history is already imprinted on your genetic structure and it's passed in humanity by women. So to disrespect a woman is literally to disrespect the whole history of humanity. Literally. To harm a woman is to actually harm the whole history of humanity, at least genetically. So I bring this little piece up because, come back to the indigo, come back to the Indian, come back to the fact that you were already here. The point I'm bringing up is this. You can escape White racism, white people included. Nobody wants racism, nobody. No rational human being is into that. That's why white folk fought for black independence. That's why there's an abolitionist movement. I talked about that earlier. That's why. 
if we appeal to the humanity in each other, then all these racial divisions, of course, will disappear. But we also have to become brothers and sisters, which means we need a God. A God. Something that we agree is above us all. Some people make law their God. Some people make love their God. All of these are good, but a godless person is a slave. This is what a slave was. It was first Islam in Africa, Arabs, Arab Moors, they called them. Those tribes, they're the ones that are you today. Because the what made you eligible for slavery was that you wasn't Muslim or Christian. First it was Islam that enslaved Africans. Then it was the Christians. Islam sold Africans to the Christians. Then the Christians took over with the Crusades. God wills it, and the Crusades started. And they defeated the Muslims and took the whole slave trade. But the ones they were enslaving was ones that were not Christian. At this point, if you, if you were Muslim, you were getting enslaved now. But in the beginning, if you, was, if you said Muslim, you said Christian, you were good. Those who were slaves who said, I'm not down with either one. I'm doing nature. I'm doing astronomy. I don't need to read. I don't need to write. I'm reading nature. These are the ones that were enslaved. These are the ones that made it to the United States. They talk all the time about Africans arriving in chains. That's a lie. Well, it's not a lie. Some did. Many did arrive in chains. But the history of Africans in this country is like, the way they tell it is like telling, it's, it's like saying 200 years from now, you're telling the history of African Americans today. And you say, look at Rodney King. Take a look at the prison system. Now these people were enslaved, weren't they? Yeah, were. <laughs> Take a look at the poverty rate. Take a look at the health rate. Take a look at the lack of education. You would say 200 years from now, them people were enslaved, weren't they? Yeah. This is how slavery was 300 years ago. How can slavery exist for 300 years if you don't believe in it yourself? I don't even believe I'm saying that. How can slavery exist for 300 years if you don't believe in it? I can see it lasting for a week. Okay, a month, a year, then we revolted and got free. Okay, two years, we were slaves. 300 years. 100 million Africans off the west coast of Africa. We weren't part of that? Nah, you got to look at it today, too. We still slaves today. It's just the slave population got bigger. It's now Asian and Europeans part of it too now. Now it's Latinos as well. And now it's uh, Arabs and Hindus and yeah. It's just the slave population got bigger. It didn't go nowhere because it was always a mental issue to begin with. Why are you slave? Because I believe that my father and my mother are my God. I believe in my culture, and I don't need to believe in yours. Okay, put these chains on, let's go. I get here to America. I'm still looking for my ancestors. I'm still praising the ancestors. The white man is calling it voodoo. They call it Yoruba and all kind of other things, but this is just my ancestry. But here in this system, I can't be myself. There goes spirituality. You are a god in your environment. You are the god of your environment. You're not the god of the universe. You're not, no, but you are the god, the creator of your environment. And your environment is as large as your perception is. When I was in the Bronx, my environment was global. I was homeless with two nothings in my pocket. But I knew this science. I was raised by a strong woman. That's all I got to say. Strong woman. Her name is Jacqueline Parker. If you ever meet her, give her a dollar. She's a strong woman. My mother. And she raised me. 
And I was eight years old. She never told me to turn the music off. In fact, when we was rapping and beating on the walls and the neighbors was complaining, she bought us Rapper's Delight. She bought us Funky 4 Plus One more. Yeah. Encouraged the hip hop in us. We didn't even know what it was, but mom's was just unconditional love. And we was crazy. Me and my brother Kenny, crazy in Brooklyn. Crazy. But my moms loved us anyway. And this is what I'm saying to all mothers in this room right now. Your daughters, your sons, if you keep that love on them, they're going to be greater than anything you could possibly imagine. And this is the point, greater than you can imagine. <laughs> this is the scary part, mom. This is it. Your kids are greater than you can imagine. When you give them love, you make them greater than you can imagine. My mother could not imagine KRS-One. I was 12 when I told her I was gonna be a rapper. I was 12, I said, Ma, I'm gonna rap. She said, okay, yeah, let's get to the dishes. <laughs> That's how she just went, just like that. I said, Ma, I'm gonna be a rapper. Okay, yeah, we'll take out the garbage. Years later, here I am, we laugh about it now. I used to tell my brother all the time, yo, you're not playing your part in the movie. You know they're gonna do a movie about us? This is way back in the, we like nobodies. But I had this knowledge. My mother used to turn me on to Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind. James Allen, As a Man Thinking. She used to crack the Bible open on us. Not, not, not every day, on Christmas and Easter. She used to open the Bible and talk about the birth of Christ. Not Jesus, Christ. What Jesus was called. That thing goes way back into history. She used to teach us about that. So mom, you are the center of not only this universe genetically, spiritually, but also culturally. Hip hop is the way it is today being portrayed in media because of women. Moms taught us that we're a bitch. We was in the other room when moms was talking to her girlfriends. This bitch thinks she crazy. We was in the room listening to moms. Where else did we get our language from? You could say the streets, but that's only other kids listening to their moms. Mom, you are the first teacher. If there's any activism to be done in this country, it is a return to motherhood on all levels. On all levels, from God to the parent. Mothers, at the least, America could boast that it's getting rid of sexism once and for all. It could boast that it's getting rid of racism because of Barack Obama's presidency. It's, it, it hasn't, but it can boast. It can say, we're on our way. Uh, we got more work to do. Uh, we got the, you could at least boast it with, with, with Barack Obama, President Barack Obama's presidency. You could boast that. With Hillary Clinton, you could also boast the power of women. For four more years, and with her, that first four years, more than the men in this audience, because society caters to men. Let me keep that, keep that. Men in this audience, the American society caters to you. The American society does not cater to women. It holds women back, holds women down, and makes women believe they're supposed to be held down. Women are guilty. Women are afraid, insecure, depressed. This is why our communities can't rise. It's because our mothers are sick. Even if the father rose up, it's useless without the mother. Useless. And I'm a father, I have all respect for fatherhood, manhood, no doubt. But manhood is nothing without womanhood. Nothing. Nothing. Men don't make women. Women make men and women. <laughs> so when we can realize, when we can realize, change the paradigm, and then you'll see your reality change. There's no revolution for everybody. I'm gonna fight the revolution and we're all gonna get justice. That's a myth. 
Here's the truth. Revolution only works for those that participate in it. That's it. This is why you have some people who make it because they participate in their own revolution. Other people are waiting for someone to tell them who they are, why they are, and where they should go.